So plenty of the news have been talking about money recently. So I thought we also talk about money. Prize money that is. So Kento Momota made history in 2019 as the first player to break half a million US dollars in prize money. In comparison, Rafael Nadal made over 16 million only in prize money in 2019 as well. Let's not even start talking about the endorsements the top tennis players pull in. We're going to take a closer look at how much prize money is being awarded to badminton pros who are playing on the World Tour circuit this year. So there are six levels to the Badminton World Tour circuit. So we start with the World Tour Finals, the World Tour Super 1000, 750, 500, 300, and then 100. So BWF implements a slightly different ratios towards prize money allocations depending on the level of the tournament, but you're not here to see that. You're here to see how much money each player makes depending on where they finish in the tournament. So the World Tour Finals is the highest paid tournament with a total prize money of 1.5 million US dollars. So right off the bat you'll notice singles and doubles players get different pay and the prize money for doubles players is listed as a pair. So you have to split that money in half for individual doubles players. So if you're like Anders Antonsen who just won the World Tour Finals, congratulations by the way, you get 120,000 before tax. If you're Li Yang or Wang Qilin, you'll get 63,000 apiece. The prize money then gets half for every single round that goes on below the winner. So remember, the World Tour Finals is the best paying badminton tournament and so it'll go downwards from there. So next we have the Super 1000 tournaments and here's a breakdown of who gets what. First we have the two recent Talon Opens which were upgraded to the Super 1000 to complete the three 2020 season Super 1000s and they have a total prize pool of 1, US, 1 million US dollar each. So if you're in singles and you win, so you get 70k, which is 70 times of what you would get if you've lost in the first round, so quite a big difference. Then again, there's a slight difference in doubles, but what you have is you're gonna have to split that with your partner. So we then go into the 2021 Super 1000s, and here you can actually see the three tournaments which are scheduled for this year, and all three of them have different amount of total prize money, with the Indonesian Open having the most at 1.25 million, and the All England the least at, eight, at 850k. I'm not sure why the All England total prize money was below the 1 million threshold required for the Super 1000s, but they must, they must have had a valid reason. So each win in the Indonesian China Open will get you slightly more prize money than the Thailand Opens this year, but it will be slightly less with the All England. If you're liking this video so far, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you. We now go on to the Super 750 and we have five tournaments. The Malaysian Open, which is right after the All England this year, as well as the Denmark, Japan, French and China Opens. All of them are above the 700k threshold required for a Super 750 tournament, with the Denmark Open having the most at 775,000 in prize money. All five of these events will pay between 750 and 775 if you lose in the first round and you get upwards of 50k if you win one of these events. So what are your thoughts about the prize money which I being paid out to the players in these tournaments. Too much? Too little? Comment in the section down below and let me know what you think. Uh, we now go into the level 4 events which are the World Tour Super 500 events. There's supposed to be 7 of them this year and there's a minimum threshold of 350k in prize money for these events. And as you can see all these tournaments are providing a prize money of 400k so above the 350k threshold except the Singapore Open at 320,000. You also note that I have listed Thailand Open in red as they have been bumped up to a Super 1000 earlier this season. So essentially everything here were to run properly, fingers crossed, we'll only have 6 Super 500s. And oh, another difference for these compared to the level 1 to 3 events is these events don't pay prize money until you get to the last 16. So any players who lose in the first round will be super sad and disappointed to not get any prize money to cover any cost at all. Winning a 400k Super 500 event in singles will get you 30,000 and just under 16k each if you are a doubles player. It is super tough to make a living as an independent full-time professional player if you're not backed by a national federation or have enough endorsements to make it through to get a proper living. So big respect to all those players who are. So what do you think the BWF can do to increase the prize money for these tournaments all around the world? Comment in the section down below, let me know what you think. We then move on to the level 5 event which is the Super 300s and there are 12 of them a year and they have minimum prize money of 150k. You can also clearly see there's an odd one out there, the Taipei Open has a prize money of 500k which means they pay more than every Super 500 event as well as more than double of every other event in this category. 
You can also see the upcoming Swiss and German Open have the prize money at 140k, which is slightly below the 150k threshold, but all the other events are above that. The, the Thailand Masters are red again, bumped up to the second Super 1000 event earlier last month, so they won't be running this year. And similar to the Super 500 events, these tournaments don't pay until you get to the last 16 of each event. And lastly, we are now at the Super 100. These are considered level 6 events and doesn't carry any HSBC sponsorship, so they're only named the BWF World Tour Super 100. They have a minimum prize money threshold of 75k, so all events scheduled for this year are within that. Winning one of these will get you around $7,000 if you're a singles player, but if you're out in the last 16, you're just getting a touch above $300. Not too sure that's enough to cover flights for most of the players. If you want to know what your next rack is, the players are playing with in the recent Thailand Open, click on the link here. I will see you in the next one.